Hello, this is a review of the Corsair TX650 80 plus bronze certified power supply. Now I like the power supply for two reasons. One, flexibility and versatility. It has, you know, all of the power cable connections you're going to need and then some. It's, you don't need any wide adapters. Two, the wires are very nice and long. Three, they're plenty sturdy and not floppy so when you put them somewhere they stay there. Um, but they're a little hefty so you're going to want to maybe tie them down to keep them where, where you want them otherwise the gravity might pull them and cause them to pull more. And um, the netting on the cables quite nice. It keeps the, you know, obviously keeps all the little cables inside, but it's a nice anti-tangle material that doesn't want to get caught up in anything. And I particularly like the long runs, so that I can keep the cables out of the way. Um, so you can see how you know I can not get in the way of the fan, let air come straight on through without letting the cabling obstruct the airflow going out to the top and the back of the case. So I, you know, for example, I have my motherboard connection there and I can keep it out of the way um, but I didn't want to cause any stress on the motherboard and this is a hefty cable this main motherboard connection so I definitely wanted to tie it down to my case so that it didn't um, didn't cause it to torque or bend downwards so this way I got it here and believe me this is cables very sturdy and strong so it's not you know it's putting all of its weight here and then it's just a straight connection to there and similarly, the other motherboard connections over here, uh, what I did is I tucked it around the back of my fan here and here before it ran down here. And then this way, they don't get in the way of any of the fan blades. So I like that it was long enough, but remember, you're going to want to tuck them down, so otherwise they're going to hang, and their heft of these cables might cause some torque on the parts that you may not want. Uh, but they're plenty long, and they give you all the connections that you'll need. For example, here's the... PCI Express, if you have a video card that takes it. Here's the old Molex adapters that give you more than these that you'll need um, because they also give you all of the SATA cable connections that are on all of your modern drives now. Now honestly, it seems like every drive I bought for my new computer came with, um, they take a SATA power connection on the back, but they also always come with an adapter to pl to turn that connection into the Molex connection that was down there. So it renders these Molex connections rather unnecessary. But it was nice that it had that, meaning it has yet even more possible power connections for me um, if I have things in the future that might need them so I don't have to buy Y adapters or anything like that. Um, the cable is fairly firm, so it's not dangly and loose. Um, it takes some bending to get into place. So when you want to daisy chain them, such as here, you see how I have these one drive stacked on another? That takes some bending, So because it's not easy. You, you know, if you plug the middle of a cable in, um, you see how the, the wire goes down here and then keeps going down here? Um, you really have to bend this back in order to get this to go straight because it's not going to be natural for it at first. So basically you figure out where you want to you know, you want to connect one of them. So you know, I ran the cable up, make your first connection, and then you're going to have to do some bending to figure out how you want to get it to fit onto the next connection. And then bend it in place first. And you're really going to have to bend it because uh, it's a firm cable. It's not just this cable that seems like it's going to break after five bends. Um, and then you get into the nice U-shape. And the nice thing is it stays there once you've made that. Um, it wants to bend back just a little bit. Um, so it's not perfect. It's not going to hold itself forever. But it's enough to work with so you don't worry about things just turning into a tangle uh, of wires when you're done. Now, the next thing is it's 80 plus bronze certified. And that has two main benefits. Is number one, you just built a new computer, and in the modern day, you don't want to be paying for power that you're not actually getting the benefit from. You know, so if it's wasting power, you know, you want to use power for the actual CPU cranking that you're doing, not just letting it be lost to heat or to vapor, you know, just losing, throwing power out the window, you know, so to say. Um, so my energy bills were plenty high, so I wanted one that I said if, it, if I am going to be using power, you know, I want to at least be you know, for my computing power and not be wasting it. So that was number one, and 80 plus bronze certified is a pretty good level. It's the next level above 80, just standard 80 plus. And, but there's silver and gold and platinum, and they tend to get more and more expensive, and you have to do the math to see if it's efficient for your particular use. 
for the average home use, I think 80 plus bronze is really good for what you'd need for the price of a power supply like this. You can look on Wikipedia if you want to go read more about 80 plus um, and the benefits of that. So the second benefit of this is being at 80 plus is that where does that wasted uh, energy go? It goes out in heat. So by being more power efficient, you're not generating as much waste in heat. So when you're trying to cool a modern computer, which takes a lot more cooling, um, especially if you're doing air ventilation like I am in my case, uh, that I don't want to be filling the cavity with excess heat just because the power supply was being wasteful. So this way, by being more efficient, it's generating less heat on its own so that it is, it is contributing to less heat within my case. Now, when I'm looking at the, da the dashboard monitors of my uh, Intel motherboard, it's telling me that the heat thresholds within my computer at almost all times is at the very low end of the spectrum. So it's going to be due to multiple factors, you know, all the other devices in here, my SSD hard drive uh, that's used most of the time, you know, a CPU and so on that can be operating in more efficient modes, but at least the power supply isn't going to be contributing as much to being excess heat generated inside here. So I can at least affirm that it is not causing, you know, everything is seem, seeming on the low end, and so obviously this one is not causing excess heat in my case as well. So I'm really happy with it. Oh, uh, one thing to remember is on the back of your computer, it, there's a power switch here. So the first time when I finished building my computer, um, I forgot to flip the switch and I pressed the power button on the front of your computer, right? Because all these cases have a power button on the front. You press that and you're like, oh, it doesn't work. So the first time I thought maybe I messed something up and it turns out I just forgot to flip, flip the switch on the back as well. Um, by the time you're connecting and you can't see underneath the desk, you just forget to flip the switch. Um, so just be aware of that on the back. I did actually measure with a power meter, with a kilowatt meter, how much energy my new computer uses with the power side plugged in. And it idles at 50, about 50 watts. Now, of course, you know, it's a whole bunch of factors to tell you if that's efficient or not. I can't say. But it was nice that it was only about 50 watts to have the computer on and idle. Uh, when it goes to sleep, it's 2.8 watts. And when the computer's off, it's only using 0.8 watts. So I personally put the whole computer in a power strip if I want to even eliminate that 0.8 watts extra. Um, but with the 80 plus bronze certification, I know that it's doing a pretty darn decent job at being efficient when it is on um, using as little as it can based on what the draws from all the other hardware. I almost was worried that I didn't know what to do with all the excess cable. So you'll see that, you know, I've tried to bundle a little bit of the cables down here and the cables I wasn't using I was able to bundle up pretty nicely. And I just grabbed a few zip ties to keep things tucked away. And with my case, I had enough room here that I could tuck them off to the side because I wanted to leave the middle open. I didn't want just extra bundles of cables tied here because, you know, you have the, you have the fan in front. You want air to just come on through, come out your air holes through the, your drive cage as well. And I didn't want it to just be blocked up on this side with a whole pile of cables here. So a case that matches with room for cable management with that you can tie things down and stretch things around is also important. I'm happy that my case had some room here widthwise so that I could stuff my extra cables to the side. And this way I don't have anything on top of the power supply in case it gets warm at all. Um, I'm not worried about um, all the heat can just dissipate away and go out the case if needed. Thanks for watching the review.